What up, Sauce Gang, and welcome back to the channel. Hot Sauce Beats here with another dope reaction for you. Well, we are back on it with that Game Theorist grind. Yes, that is right. We are checking out another video from Matt Pat, and we are back with that Minecraft lore. And we are on, I believe it's episode nine, Game Theory, the Stolen Souls of Minecraft, because it's a game theory. You guys know I am absolutely having a blast reacting to these. I'm loving this series, and I can't wait to hear more from Matt Pat. So please make sure you show some love and subs uh, subscribe to Matt Pat, the game theorist. And if you enjoy my reaction, please help support the channel by smashing that subscribe and like button. It's absolutely free and it great helps out the channel. But enough talking. Let's get to reacting and roll that bomb ass intro. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Eat, sleep, make beats. Eat, sleep, make beats. Hot sauce beats. Because it's a game theory. Me. me when I see a plane. Me when someone tickles my neck. Me when I stand on my own head. Me when I cosplay as Undertale's lesser dog. Me when I descend into H-E double toothpicks. Hey. Okay, that's how we're starting this off. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory. Building out the lore that. of Minecraft love faster that. than a Swede building a giant meatball in the sky. Goodbye, Sven. You will be missed. In my last two Minecraft Goodbye, theories, I've been taking a <gasps> Oh my, I forgot. We uh we found out about Sven. Because uh, we did a uh, game... Uh... Uh, Minecraft Unsolved about Sven. Closer look at the Illagers, the evil villager mobs who are infamous for needing a bit more vitamin D in their life. Then again, you wouldn't have a nice tan either if you too lived in secret compounds buried deep in the woods. During those last two episodes, we looked closely at the many strange rooms hidden inside their woodland mansion homes, ultimately concluding that the Illagers, the magical evokers and the maniacal vindicators, were all villagers that were exiled for their experiments into yes. the powers of life and death. I'm pretty convinced I'm and I was I was pretty convinced too. I think I really believe Matt Pat hit the nail on the head with this. Like I really liked this theory a lot. Probably I'd even say one of my favorites out of the ones that we've reacted to. Right so about far. those theories, though I'll admit the actual evidence I presented to support them required a few leaps in logic. Evokers are the only mob to possess totems of undying, which literally revives you at the point of death. Their mounts, the beastly ravagers, share an un any amount of physical similarities Identical. with the normal villager. Green eyes, green eyes, unibrow. And it's not just physical similarities either, it's auditory as well. They both share uh. that same honking noises. Uh. Uh. And from a lore uh. standpoint, ravagers weren't allowed to be scared of rabbits. Again, possibly connecting them to a villager origin. Last but most Whoa. strangely, the illagers have rooms full of wool in the exact colors of Minecraft Steve's outfit, implying that they're trying to create or replicate our blocky hero in some way. The connections are certainly there, but admittedly, they're weaker than a wooden axe against a block of obsidian. But I was Which, fam, if you don't know, a wooden axe is not going to do anything to a block of obsidian. Vinced, I was onto something, so true to the spirit of the game, I kept digging, and I struck diamond. I struck Ooh, emerald. How many? I, I struck oh. netherite? What is the thing what? I should be most excited about finding when I'm digging in the ground at the- I'd say netherite. Yeah. Netherite's not the easiest to get. I'd say netherite. This point, because there are so many rare high tier blocks at this point, and they all have such different usages that I'm not quite sure what's the most exciting one to find at this point. I think it's netherite. Like to me, I think netherite's Enchanted the most apple. exciting thing because it's super rare and it's also apple, the a notch apple. diamond at this point is like, oh, it's diamond. Anyway. Chat isn't, or or is it an ox axolotl? What's the most rare thing to find? Actually, I think it's one of the axolotls, right? Oxalot. I always mispronounce it too. I mean, words Wait, don't I struck a well rare and exciting buried resource that serves as an app analogy for me finding the app missing analogy. link in my lore theory. The evokers are indeed playing with the powers of life and death, but not quite in the way that I originally thought. And today's oh. theory is going to prove it as we cover the secrets of the vindicators and the mysteries of the Vex. So don't touch that dial, okay. theorists. After right. these so messages, we'll be right, right back. New theory where is available right now. This is your last chance to pre-order our new spring items like the holographic switch case and our holographic zip-up jacket. They're rainbow-tastic. Wow, it's so... Insert current youth word for awesome here. Right you are, Timmy. And don't you forget right that Pikachu backpack Timmy. plush, the waterproof anorak hoodie, and my personal favorite, That's the Game Theory metal-embossed wallet. I mean, just look at that copyright-neutral Minecraft-style font right on the it's wallet and jacket. It's just a theory. 
After June 5th, all these items get Thanos theory. dusted away. So if you want to guarantee getting one of these I items, I pretty good at saying it. If he ever needs a voiceover, more than happy to do it. I'll do it for free. Ow. Operators are standing by. There is no jingle for getting back to the show. Ever since I started back researching the, the Illagers, something kept rubbing me the wrong way. The Vindicators. Unlike all the other villagers and Illagers with their, their iconic eyes green eyes, Vindicators have blue eyes. And this is apparently an important detail of their design. In a previous texture update for the game, Vindicator eyes were changed to green in order to oh, fit really? with all the other villager Illager mobs. But it was changed back to its original blue. In Snapshot 18W47B, the color of the Vindicator eyes turned blue again so clearly it's important to the backstory of the character for some reason just like ravagers not being scared of rabbits was apparently important to the backstory of that monster so why why does a blue eyes vindicator dragon matter so much well think back to one of the rare rooms that we found inside the woodland mansion in a previous theory in those rooms there's a giant recreation of an illager head with a bright blue block of the magical ingredient lapis hidden in the middle that in and of itself would be weird and Enough. Where where are you gonna go with this, Matt Pat? I'm 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 curious, bro. He I, I gotta feel like he's about to blow our minds right now. But there's something about this strange room that I overlooked before. Sure, it looks to be an Illager head, but it's not. At least, not quite. You see, it has the pale gray skin that the Illagers are known for, but notice the connected eyebrow. Illagers all have a separated set of eyebrows. Only Villagers are the ones rocking the unibrow. Now, this is an important detail because I think it's hinting at what's really going on with the Illager experiments. Woodland mansions are filled with prison cells and altars. We've talked about this before so we know that the evokers are holding people here against their will and Facts. doing as they, the mind they, they run in that prison ain't nobody getting out ain't nobody green green didn't even make it out of the the woodland mansion too soon, chat. Was that too soon, chat? Crap, my bestiary phrased it, unspeakable activities to them. So it's my theory that evokers are kidnapping villagers and yes, turning some of them into ravagers, but I think they're also implanting pieces of blue lapis into the heads of others. They are turning them into mindless rage monsters, the blue-eyed vindicators. vindicators. That's why we're seeing statues of villager heads with gray illager skin and a cube of lapis in the middle. It's a monument to the villager under going the transformation oh. into a vindicator and it's a bit more than speculation consider this to vindicate means to clear someone of blame or suspicion it's a weird Ooh. name for axe wielding murder cult members attacking villagers and kidnapping people to experiment on them in the woods but what if the vindicator is actually trying to vindicate that they aren't evil in the first place that they were brainwashed or forced to become evil by the evokers through this lapis injection adding to this let's look at the evoker entry in the mind Craft my bestiary. Uh, just, Quote, just, a world will he just kind of like came out of left field with that last part about like how they're trying to help. I'm like, wait a minute. When has a vindicator ever helped anybody? Uh, because I know like about two hits, two, maybe three tops, you done. Only have a certain number Let's of evoker residents within too. it. Their evil is thus contained. No new evokers will ever be able to spawn, end quote. This is also true of the Vindicators. Jumping forward in that same book, quote again, as an illager, their numbers in the world are limited. They do not breed or reproduce in any way, end quote. Illagers do not breed. Their numbers are fixed. This is interesting because to me, it seems to indicate that, that the evokers, true. knowing that their numbers are indeed fixed and will never increase are forced to have to create other illagers and they're doing so via magical oh. means kidnapping other members of the villager community and they're transforming them into vindicators oh. through some sort of magical lapis lazuli process other things helping this whole theory out is the fact that the vindicator mob is stupid and that's like, not just me calling it out <laughs> it is explicitly dumb stated in There's official dumb lore dumbs. from the game again from the mob bestiary quote the vindicator is stupid enough to forget about its intended victim after a short time. <laughs> Nothing makes someone lose a few brain cells quite like having a magical stone forcibly injected into the center of their head. The book also All explicitly compares vindicators so to zombies, saying that its body is, quote, only a little tougher than a zombie. So again, we have the idea. I got a feeling like somewhere in, in lore theory, Herobrine is real. 
got a feeling like it was Hero Brian was maybe made in, in the Woodland Mansion. Of a Vindicator being maybe? some sort of mindless husk, maybe? a brainwashed, brain dead soldier who's working for, created by, and built to protect the evokers who originated them. The last thing worth mentioning here is the Vindicator Easter egg that many players are already familiar with. Name tagging a Vindicator as Johnny makes him especially violent against all other mobs except other Illagers. Obviously, this is a reference to the movie The oh, Shining. I didn't, I didn't know this at all. What? Here's Johnny. Why here, though? Well, Vindicators use an axe, and so did Jack Torrance in the movie, except there's something else here that's worth mentioning. Jack Torrance in The Shining is just a normal guy who's driven into being a crazed, murderous madman by the evil supernatural forces that exist in the hotel around him. Like lot, He's an innocent of... guy who is corrupted by spiritual powers to the point of going insane and attacking everyone around him. The Easter egg movie reference could be just for fun, sure, but it could also be hinting at the origins of this mob. Innocent Ooh, villagers ooh, corrupted so by the evil magic of the evokers as they tried to build their ranks. And now they're left to vindicate themselves, prove that they're not actually guilty of the crimes they commit. But this is all still obviously speculation, right? I haven't done anything to prove that the evokers can actually wield magic with powers That's over life true. and death. For that, I turn your attention to the Vex. The Vex are flying hostile mobs that are summoned to attack by evokers. They're like little angels with wings until they start attacking you and you suddenly see that they're definitely no angels. <laughs> These things are tiny and they are vicious. Makes them, in my opinion, one of the most challenging regular hostile mobs in the game to deal with. What makes them even worse really? to deal with, though, is that not only are they flying, but they can also pass through any block, including Literally. water and lava, without taking damage. There is no escaping from these things once they target onto you. But the reason I'm talking about them today is that they're the final proof that I needed to show that the evokers truly have control over death itself. To understand what? why, we need to begin with Minecraft's newest game, Minecraft Dungeons. This game literally came out earlier this week. Congratulate me for resisting the urge to put Minecraft <laughs> 2 into the title of this video. Nintendo sent me a free Switch copy of it early. Thanks for that one, guys. I've been playing a lot of it just to see if there's anything that would elaborate on the lore of this world a bit more. And wouldn't you know it, a key gameplay mechanic of dungeons is exactly what I needed. You see, in what? this game, which is basically Diet Diablo, dungeon crawling, loot collecting, mowing through waves of enemies, it's all really satisfying, there are no static spells that mage characters learn over time. Instead, you kill mobs, and then you collect souls. You then use those souls to fuel abilities from your specialty artifacts, as in souls, spirits of the dead. There are also weapons in the game that boost your soul-gathering abilities, like the Eternal Knife, the Bow of Lost Souls, and the Soul Fists. You heard that right, friends. The Soul souls. Fists, they always Spirits help. of the Dead. And that's not me reading into things here. According to a tweet from the Minecraft Dungeons team, a true adventurer puts their soul into everything they do, and the truest adventurers put other people's souls in Whoa. it too. For a long time, we've been making jokes okay. and speculating about exactly this sort of thing in Minecraft, right? Literally. Soul sand. That, the timing of that is crazy, chat. This is something like let's go to when this video came out that he was literally talking about for the past couple of videos and then they come out and, and the say nether that. is from dead people har 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 look at all their screaming faces hidden in the texture har, except har, now har. it's pretty much confirmed outright the souls of dead people are an energy source in this child friendly lego simulator but here's wow. why it all matters for today's theory you see the vex have a couple of unusual properties as i mentioned before they're able to travel through all different block types without damage but they also glow in the dark if you fight a bunch of vex in a dark room you can still see them them. However, even though they themselves have a ghostly glow, they don't actually light up anything else in the environment. Almost like they're a spirit. A being made out of souls. Look back at some of that Minecraft Dungeons footage. We see the exact same type of behavior from souls in that game. Here they are in a dark environment. They themselves are glowing, but they don't cast any light onto the surrounding world, just like the Vex. A being made of souls would also make sense for a creature that's able to pass through any sort of brick Type, just like a ghost or a Wild spirit. Me. And here's the kicker, my friend. Listen to the sound that an individual Vex oh makes. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. I heard that. One Vex is speaking in multiple different overlapping voices at the same time. Let me play those clips one last time. <laughs> it sounds like four or five different. 
What this tells me is that a single Vex is actually a collection of multiple souls fused together. That's how you get shrieking and laughing and ghostly whooshes throughout their sound effects. In the words of the mob bestiary, quote, We do not know what a Vex's body is made from since it has not yet been possible to obtain a specimen, but it is quite possible that it is not flesh as we know it. End quote. No, no it's not. It's a being composed of spirits. Multiple spirits smushed together into a flying demon, and the evoker is the one that is calling these creatures forth. The Evoker is able to summon the souls of the dead to do its bidding. And if all that wasn't proof enough that the Evoker has power over life and death, a the common button, item in Minecraft Dungeons is the Spirit Knife. An item that, in the description, reads as follows. A ceremonial knife empowered using Illager Evocation and holding the Wrath of Spirits. The Illagers are able to harness and weaponize the anger of the dead. And there you have it, my miners and crafters. Definitive what? proof that in Minecraft, there are such things as spirits. Spirits contained within the soul sand of the nether. Spirits of the dead that the Evoker can then draw upon and use in his attacks in the form of the Vex. Wow. The Evokers are indeed toying with the powers of life and death. This They're having a lot of chat. success with it too. They're able to use souls to attack. They create new creatures using the souls. And who knows? They're potentially infusing other beings, alive or dead, with life. Uh, you all so, you to sold me, man, Pat. You, you sold me, bro. Good luck sleeping tonight knowing that they're out there. The lost Hero souls Brand. of Minecraft are hunting for you. But hey, you can actually sleep a bit more soundly tonight without having to fear the undead souls of Minecraft thanks to our sponsor for today's episode, Simply Safe. As a moderately famous oh, internet dang. person, it's hard it's for me to rest easy sometimes. Theory. Home addresses are shockingly easy to find, and we've had more than our fair share of fans dropping unmarked letters into our mailbox, which is cute That's and endearing safe. and fun, but also a bit safe. unsettling. And it starts to get really scary when someone who really doesn't like you starts sending you death threats. So home security is is a big deal for me and Steph and Oliver, and I personally sleep easier thanks to Simply Safe. It's a reliable home security system that protects you every which way to Sunday. With Simply Safe, you just order it online or over the phone. It's delivered right to your home, and you set it up in less than an hour. Oh, it is super we'll watch easy. This ad, you just stick bro. these sensors exactly Simply where you need good. them, and your home is professionally monitored 24/7 for just 50 cents a day. If anything happens, they make say, sure that the police get called immediately. Me. And best of all, they have exactly the levels of protection that. That you're looking for. Entry videos. sensors for doors and windows, motion sensors for late night in your house, theory. stuff that you would expect, but even stuff that I you wouldn't think about, chest. like water sensors to detect leaks, which you can bet we doubled down on in our house after all the double. water damage we had to deal with last year. Nothing like losing an entire floor of your oh, home to make you down paranoid them water about stuff like detectors. that. So when we learned that Simply Safe had water detectors, yeah, we bought a bunch of those. It's just not an issue anymore. Two? We're protected around the clock by an award-winning home security system. So sleep easier tonight with a product that I I really, really stand by, and one that I really appreciate for my own personal sanity, Simply Safe. Visit simplysafe.com slash MatPat, M A T P A T, to learn more. Or, you know, links in the top line of the description. That's simplysafe.com slash MatPat. And remember, it's yes. all just a theory. A game, a game theory. theory. Thanks for watching. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We ain't ready for that. We ain't ready for that heat. We ain't ready for that. I mean, come on now. Oh my God, chat. What? So here's here's just like during like on the second half of this. This is exactly what I was envisioning. This game, the dungeons uh, update came out. And he just starts playing it and then just like a little a little light bulb goes off and he's like, oh my God, this confirms everything. I knew I was right. Yeah, I know he doesn't talk like that, so I don't know why I was using that accent, but. Anyways, chat, this was awesome. And I, again, I, I thought this has always been a good thing. I didn't know about the Vexes. And holy cow, that is kind of terrifying. You can literally hear like four to six different voices in there. Multiple souls are inside that little Vex, which is okay. Cause I mean, I could get a totem of nine from them. So I'm happy. It's a win-win. But um, this is one of my favorite days of the week, fam. I love reacting to these. I love learning about Minecraft lore theories of lore through Matt Pat, the game theorist. Make sure you show this channel and Matt Pat some love. Subscribe to the channel, like this original video, and let me know, chat in the comments, what do you like about this theory? Do you agree with it? Again, I think he's pretty spot on and I see, 100% I see it. And with that game, the update, 
Dungeons, the game coming out, it just kind of confirmed a lot of the stuff, especially about the Souls. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please help support the channel by smashing that subscribe and like button. It's absolutely free and it great helps out the channel. Enjoy the rest of your day. It's Taco Tuesday. And remember, it's eat, sleep, and make beats. And as usual, be kind to one another. And that's all I got. Boom. I'm out. Uh, gotta be love for the sauce gang. Peace out, fam. I love you.